Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in to what's going to be a full face getting ready with me and wear test throughout the day. I've done one other of these videos before and you guys seem to really enjoy it. So here I am today again to actually talk mostly about a brand. I'm actually trying quite a few new products in here, but primarily around the brand RMS Beauty, which I mentioned in that first full face review with check-ins. But because these tend to be longer videos, I will tell you about it as I'm putting everything on. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first product I'm gonna be talking about though actually isn't RMS Beauty, but it is still something that I want to use here on camera because I'm gonna be talking about the collection at large here pretty soon once I get through all the products. It's the ELF, part of the ELF Beauty Shield collection. They sent me the whole collection and this is the SPF 50 Skin Shielding Primer in a universal tint. You'll see that it has kind of a slight, light grayish beige tint. There's also a tinted moisturizer that has a much thinner consistency. You can see here this is really more of like a fluffy mousse sort of texture, but it looks identical in terms of um, coloring on the skin. And then you can see once, because at first I was a little concerned that this would be a little too cool and gray for me, but this, both this and the um, tinted moisturizer blend very smoothly and evenly into the skin. This is very subtly scented with like an orange. Definitely doesn't linger and you can barely even smell it now as I apply. By the way, I'm wearing press on nails. These are not impressed, but they are from Kiss and I was looking all over the box that I got them from and I can't find a style. So they're just like white kind of blue tinted pearlescent nails. I really have been loving them for summer. I've been wearing, I've had them on for a couple days now, but I'm sorry I can't tell you what kind of style they were. I got them at a Walmart in Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas, if that helps at all. So maybe check your Walmart as opposed to CVS or Walgreens. You might be able to find them there. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go in with my foundation, which is actually a concealer from RMS Beauty. Part of the reason why I wanted, I put all these products to the test is because I was stand, I actually got the chance to stand at a physical counter when I, on a recent beach trip where I went to kind of this boutique place, it's called Patchouli. If you're ever in the seaside or Rosemary Beach area. It's a pretty short drive there and it's just a cute little boutique and they actually have an RMS Beauty display. That is not to say I'm sure these displays are everywhere and I'm sure you can probably find out where they are on like an RMS Beauty website or something like that. There is no need to go to this specific place in Florida to get this. It just happened to be where I found it and so given the opportunity to understand which products are actually available in the brand and how they work together, uh, compelled me to buy quite a few products. So as I was standing at the display, the woman explaining how these products work together told me that this Uncover Concealer, or Uncover Up Concealer, mine is in the shade 22, actually functions as a foundation if you take this oil, which is just called beauty oil, put a drop or two in here and you use a brush to apply it all over your face, it kind of thins out. And I was very intrigued because as someone with combo skin, oil, on with my foundation sounds like the worst thing I could do. It sounds like a day of nightmare makeup, right? <laughs> but I wanted to give it a shot. So here I am just going to put um, a little bit, let's do two drops in there. She also said you could use this, I mean, obviously as any, any beauty oil you might, like before you go to bed, use it to prime your face before you put on your foundation if it's not this. Lots of uses for this, but today I'm going to use it with the concealer. And I think the next step would be to use a different beauty oil because there are a lot more affordable beauty oils out there. I think this one was 75. I'll go back and check the packaging. I'll have pricing for all this stuff annotated here somewhere, but it was not cheap. And I can think of a couple of other beauty oils that I really, really like, namely like the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. And so there might be an opportunity to use that with this instead. So I think that'll be the next step in trying all this out if in fact I like this period. <laughs> So I should have done like a before shot of my face because I've already covered up a little bit over it now. I'm having having some breakouts over here, so it'll be good opportunity to see how well this covers up. I'm starting first, um, clearly, with the foundation. And I've ta this is a tapered foundation, like fluffier, so I can get into the, what is kind of a smaller pot. From BH Cosmetics, it's from a brush set that I got a while back. So any similar brush will do. And so I'm just going and patting that in. It's a really great shade match. And I'm pretty impressed with how um, not oily it is. Like it, it really is sinking very nicely into the skin. You know, it's not sitting on top like a greasy mess and it's not separating um, the cream the cream foundation, right? It's not like making that kind of do weird PC things across my skin. It's all blending it in very nice and beautifully. But here's what I don't know. So now when I go into conceal, I'm still gonna have, you can see here, what is a pretty sheeny uh, overlay on top of this. The oil is still very much there. And so I'm wondering how that will act in my under eye area when I go to layer it up and kind of spot conceal and also put it in my under eye area. So let's go ahead and do that. Hold on, I need to hit a coffee. Oh. Woo. Okay, 
So to do the concealer, and actually a lot of other things around the rest of my face, I'm gonna be going in and using these new brushes from Real Technique. I got these from Octoly. Um, let me go back to the packaging and see what they're called. These are the new Multitech collection. I am not sure if they're a limited edition, but it includes, it says it's for detailed application of precision, blending, shadow, highlighter, liner, more. There's one universal cut, four sizes, limitless ways to play. So it also comes with this little um, holder as well, which is kind of nice. And then there is on the back of here, you can obviously go to their channel to watch how they use them to apply various products to your face, but they also have a rough guide here as well. So the point S, which is this largest one, is for all of our shadow concealer, contour lines, highlighter, and more. So let's go ahead and use that to conceal. I will say though, as I've been talking here, I haven't noticed um, the shine from the oil go down. Like I do feel like I'm pretty healthy, dewy, glowy, borderline, excessively shiny. So I'm wondering if that will continue to sink into my skin or if I'll need to go in with my, um, I have loose setting powder also from RMS that's supposed to be used in conjunction with all this and I might just need to set my whole face as opposed to my under eyes, which is what I typically do. So I'm gonna go in with that large, the largest brush in this set and it is very soft and it fits perfectly. Like I don't think I would have wanted to go in with this smaller one just because, yeah, I'll use this for the cream eyeshadow I have because it would fit best in there, but um, I feel like it's a little bit more dense to where it might apply too much of this and kind of get cakey, whereas the way this bigger brush applies in here, very nice. And overall, I wanna say with this concealer, like it's very easily built, right? I'm, I feel like I've been layering up quite a bit and it's not becoming too excessive, too cakey, anything like that. So here's the before and after. Very minimal difference though, right? I mean, I feel like I have been piling, piling this on and it's none too buildable. Like the coverage kind of is what it is. Yeah, so that is just the one thing about this though, is now whenever I want to go in and use this, I feel like there's always just gonna be that, sh that oily sheen over the top. So I also feel like I'm gonna blow through it pretty quickly because I mean, I haven't made like a sizable dent, but I just can't help but feel with the amount that I've put on my face, this little pot is gonna go fast. And none of these products are uh, cheap by any means. This is an eye polish in the shade Solar. It looks a lot like Max Indian Wood Paint Pot, maybe a little bit uh, cooler and more bronzy. Unfortunately, I used to have Indian Wood and no longer do. I purchased it eons ago and it got super dried out and eventually I just had to can it. But when I picked this up, that was my immediate first thought. So I wish I had it here to compare so that you could understand so you're not duplicating it on your own. But in the meantime, I'm kind of excited to use it. So then to apply that, I am going in with the Point Extra Small swirling that in there and then there we go i kind of had to use a heavier a little bit of a heavier hand and even then it's still applying kind of sparse i would say like okay so now that that's blended out i kind of want more pigmentation so i'm gonna use my finger just go in that's what i'm talking about see that's a huge difference you can really build up the metallic finish here but it is a one and done shadow i was a little concerned that you know having that shimmer in my crease would be a little you know, it just wouldn't look like a, a good transition, but you can really buff it out with something like this to create, you know, a very subtle looking crease. And it's so multidimensional. Look, it looks like I have like a, a deeper shadow on my outer corner. I really like that. So then let's do the same over here. Yeah, that is just so pretty. Now to even things out a little bit, I am gonna go in and apply this to the lower lash and I'm gonna go in with the extra, extra small, get a little bit in there and then run that along the lower lash line. Ooh, oh, I wish I could show this to you. The concealer is already creasing. I don't know if you can see this, but I just, when I like look forward, I could see a definite crease right there. So before I go in and set this, I am definitely gonna need to go in and buff it out a little bit more. No, I'm really hoping this doesn't amount to a disaster face. I do look really greasy though. So that's that. Now I'm gonna apply some mascara. This is what I have been using and loving for quite a while. Well, I mean, I say that maybe almost a month at this point. It's the Dior um, Pump and Volume Mascara. I have a review of this if you wanna go check that out. While I'm doing this though, I do wanna say that those brushes, these Real Techniques brushes that I've been using are super soft and I realized that after using this extra, extra, extra small. <laughs> um, sometimes with these that are like ultra uh, precise and tapered, I find that if the bristles are too harsh, uh, or scratchy even, they kind of hurt to apply to a delicate place like your lower lash line. And so um, as I was thinking about how those were performing and realizing that I wasn't actually telling you how they were performing, I thought it was worth mentioning here um, that overall the texture of those is very, very soft. And even though they are dense, they give you a little bit of fluff to help kind of buff and move that product around. But you guys, the amount of shine on my face right now is 
kind of worrying me. <laughs> no. Now let's do some blush. So I bought one blush without realizing that I already had one, um, but that's okay, the more the merrier. So I had already owned Smile, which is kind of a lighter, I don't even know that they still make this. I don't remember them having this on the display, but that's not saying much. Maybe you can go back and look at the vlog footage. I actually vlogged while I was there, kind of, not very well. I'm not a good vlogger, I've already told you guys this. I am not good at like narrating what we're doing. I'm good at taking B-roll, I guess, like the, the things that we're doing, but not telling you about it. So I have like, shots of Madison, my sister and I going bike riding and we're like shopping in boutiques. But for the most part, I'm not actually telling you what we're doing. So I'm getting there guys. Maybe I'll include some of that here if I haven't already. Um, but yeah, maybe I can go back and see if this was something on the display. As I look at the texture now though, it's a little bit dry. Um, there's just some random texture in there. So I am actually going to go and use the newer formula, like the one that I just bought, just in case. Um, just to make sure I get the best quality out of this. So this is the lip to cheek in the shade modest, which I really liked because it's, I mean, obviously it's like a pinky, uh, a deeper pinky peach and it has like some subtle brown undertones, which I feel like is going to be really flattering to the lips. It's kind of like a your lips, but better color on me. And I just love kind of a good, um, because it has that brown tone in there, it's almost going to double as a contour as well as a blush. So that's what I did. Then to apply that, I'm going to use a duo fiber. Actually, I'll do uh, different techniques on each side. On one side I'll use a finger and on the other side I'll use a brush just to see, just to see how it goes. So I'm first just swirling this duo fiber brush. This by the way is a Sigma F15 and so I'm gonna apply that. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, oh boy. That was a a lot of product. The nice thing though about this oil, for as shiny as I feel like it's making my face, I'm glad I didn't powder over it because I feel like it's making it easier to apply the blush in over top. And hopefully the same will be said for the highlighter. So now I'm gonna go in with my finger on the other side. Oh, good grief, this is very, very pigmented. How did I not learn my lesson? Yeah, it's still working good though. I mean, like minimally moving around that base. So that's nice. I like that and I really like the shade. So now I have two different highlighters. Again, this is one of the first products I ever purchased from RMS, it's the Living Luminizer, because I feel like everyone and their brother was talking about how beautiful it was, how perfect it was as a highlighter. It's definitely more of a wet sheen kind of highlighter and has a frosty, um, cool, icy white sort of glow, obviously. So having used that, I'm actually gonna use their newer highlighter, which they say is basically the same, but they call it Master Mixer, which to me sounds like it has a different function, but when I was talking to them at the counter for it, they said, yeah, it's basically the same as Living Luminizer. It just has more of a golden undertone. So that's what I'm gonna use today, because I also feel like it complements the bronzy on my, is that already creasing? I think it might be already creasing. God, what a bummer. I might need to powder my eyes too. Okay, that'll be an experiment. We'll powder one eye and not the other. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna take a finger, run it through the, um, what is this, the Master Mixer just dab that to the tops of my cheekbones because what I need now is more shine, is, is more glow. That's what I need on this with this look. I don't feel like that's doing a whole lot. Not, not a whole lot. Ooh, I need to do my brows. So that's the highlighter. That's not, um, yeah, I'm gonna stick to saying I just don't see a whole lot of difference. Let's do the brows and come back. All right, brows are in place. I have continued to get progressively more dewy, so it is time to finally set all of this. I'm gonna go back in with that um, small point just to blend out the under eye area because I do feel like that is um, an extra hot mess the creases, but then I'm gonna take kind of a larger powder brush and go in with this RMS Beauty Tinted Unpowder. Um, they had multiple shades of this. I don't think it really would've made a difference. I ended up going with two, three, but when I swatched this, it didn't really give a ton of additional coverage, even though it looks pigmented, like this, here's the powder puff in here. So I'm gonna go and actually just go press that in pretty much everywhere. So when I was using this in the store, the one thing that I was really impressed with was how, oh my gosh, there's definite coverage there and it might be too dark. Wow, that's so weird. When I was swatching this in the store, there was like no coverage and now I feel like I have kind of orangey deeper under eyes. That's bizarre. Shoot, um, well, we'll just see how this goes. Okay, so, but what I do love about it, even though I really didn't think it was this tinted, was how finely milled it is. I mean, I'm hoping that kind of saves the rest of this look because it's going to take down that shine and almost sink into that excess oil without getting cakey because it's so, finely milled that you're not gonna have to worry about larger 
um, sections of it kind of clumping up. So it's definitely taking down the shine. So it definitely took out the shine, but I do feel like it emphasized some unevenness in my blush. And it also clearly gave me that more orange, like a deeper under eye area. It kind of counteracted any sort of brightening anything I had going on there, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, this is probably not the right thing to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I didn't wanna go completely matte. There was a reason that I put on highlighter, and it's because I definitely wanted a little bit of glow. So I'm gonna go back in with the mix Master Mixer and apply that to the tops of my cheekbones. So as long as you pat in over top, it's not disturbing um, the powder and it's not clumping up over it. So that is good. Oh, that's right. We are also going to set an eye. That's what we said we were going to do, which now I'm hesitant to do if it's going to change the hue of the eyeshadow. But you know, I really wanna make sure I'm exploring all avenues. So let's just go ahead, take a little bit of this. I'm going to press that over this eye because this is the one that I feel like was creasing before. What a difference that makes. Oh my gosh. Okay, we need to put a little bit more back on. Let's... <laughs> We need to put the shine back in. Okay, so I do feel like we were able to put some of the gorgeous metallic finish back in. It is still not nearly as shiny as the unset eye, but it will be our reference point to understand how this cream shadow performs unprimed and unset versus unprimed and kind of set. Alrighty, and now last up is just to go in and finish with the lips and for that back into the lip to cheek and which again is the shade Modest. I'm just gonna use my finger to go in and apply that or maybe I should go in with one of the brushes here. I'll do a rough pass with the finger first and then I'll go use that Real Techniques. Not bad. Okay, now I'm gonna go try and build it up. This is with the extra extra small point brush. Built up pretty nicely. It feels very comfortable on the lips. I like that. It built up really nice. All right, so now I'm going to take some before and afters. For reference, it is 9.30 on the nose right now, so the next time I check in, hopefully we'll be right around noon. We can see how everything's progressing, but yeah, this is it. So far, I will say uh, it's a very natural, the skin itself, very natural coverage. Somewhat buildable, but not too much, obviously, and there was definitely some sheen. You absolutely need a powder to set this with if you have a combo to oily. Honestly, even if you just have like normal skin and don't want like a super um, excessively dewy shine about you, I would recommend complementing the oil and concealer bit with some setting powder. But we will see how the rest of this wears in a bit. Okay guys, so it is now 12, 15-ish. Here's a check-in, there's some overhead lighting. Where was it better, like here-ish? Yeah, sure. So the eyeshadow is definitely creasing, right? Like and I don't think it's any better on the eye that I set it with maybe slightly better and it's certainly not transfer proof. I was rubbing my eyes, not even majorly, but just like kind of pressing my fingers because, hey, allergy eyes. And as I did, like there was all this transfer on my nail and finger. Um, so yeah, it's I don't anticipate this being really long lasting unfortunately. The rest of the face doesn't look so bad. Um, you can definitely see the shine from the highlighter here, but I wouldn't say I'm getting exceptionally greasy anywhere else around my face, including forehead, like T-zone area, looking good there. Let's maybe, it's not a sunny day out, I wish you would see it. Now I get this weird blue hue. Ugh, but but under the natural light, you can still see I'm a little less shiny. I, you know, a little, little bit here. I am a little scared to touch my face, though I will say that because of the kind of, you know, just like it's still kind of tacky, you know, like around my jaw and stuff, even where I set it, it has a little bit of a tacky texture, so I'm a little nervous to touch it. But for the most part, still looking kind of okay, right? I would say so. Yeah, I will see you in another couple hours. Yikes, kidding. I meant to also talk about the lips. Clearly they are gone. I have done very minor eating and drinking this morning, like coffee, um, very light snacking, so not a whole lot of wear and tear there, but it is still totally gone. But I still have the pigment from it on my cheek, so, so far it's a decently wearing cheek product, but definitely not a long wearing lip product. Now that's it, see you later. I don't know where the time went. This is now the second and I guess final check-in because it is 8 p.m. here, guys. I don't know how the rest of the day got away from me, but in between the time that I did the one and only check-in in this video, and now I have eaten lunch, did some work and just overall running around the house. I took Dallas for what was a 45 minute walk. There was definitely some glistening and dewiness, especially around my mouth area. So let's assess the damage. I have a close up shot here that I took actually before I started filming this. I, and so the difference between that and now is I did go ahead and reapply the lip to cheek 
only on my lips though, not on my cheeks. I have not touched up any of the rest of my face makeup, so let's talk about it. The eyes are a mess. Doesn't matter if I wore this thing alone or if I wore it, you know, if I set it with that powder like I did, both eyes are just creasy, faded, nasty messes which is such a bummer. One, because this is a very expensive, what, what is it called again? It is this eye polish, again, in the shade Solar. Such a bummer because it's such a gorgeous shade, and I loved how faceted it was or how dimensional it was, even though it was just one product. But boy, oh boy, is there some creasing happening and major fading happening. And what's unfortunate about it, I'm glad I tested setting it with a powder. Obviously, when you use something like the setting powder, it, it drastically changed the finish. You lose a lot of that high shine metallic sort of texture to it. But what's unfortunate about it is I don't know that using a shout, uh, uh, shouter, <laughs> shadow to set this, like if you applied a base, then you applied this eye polish, and then you even set it with an, an additional shadow and you more so just use this as a colored base. Just by doing this little test today, I'm not convinced that you wouldn't still get some nasty, creasy wear out of this. So can't recommend the eye polish at all. But I am happy to say that that was probably the worst part of this look because I'm not unhappy with the way the rest of the face turned out. I'm shocked to say that for as short as the lifespan was for the lip to cheek on my lips, it's still very much there on my cheeks. And for as shiny, and dewy as the foundation, the base that I was wearing here was, I thought for sure it would just suck it, like suck that cheek color in, and it didn't. It was preserved really, really well without breaking apart, getting patchy, fading, anything like that throughout the day. So really pleased with this. And in terms of comfort on the lips, there really isn't, um, yeah, not really a scent here. So you don't have to, if you're sensitive to that, you don't need to worry about that. It's not a long wearing lip product, but it is pretty easy to apply because it comes in this potted format. So I actually would recommend this if it's something that sounds like it's right up your alley in terms of like maximizing usage out of one product. It's gonna be great for travel because it's so multi purpose. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend if you're interested in it. I probably should have done, I'm a little out of order here. I probably should have done my base first, right? Um, so the foundation, I was so, you could probably tell, was very skeptical given how shiny it was. If I had to do over again, I think I would have only used one drop of this oil because a little goes such a long way, as you can see by the way it applied on my skin. But what I was so impressed with is look at the wear now. I mean, granted, it is, it's a natural coverage foundation. I think that's the point behind this is it's very much a no makeup, healthy skin sort of look where it just evens out your skin tone. It's definitely not gonna cover any severe hyperpigmentation or any severe under eye discoloration because as you can see, I have kind of like very slight but still noticeable purpley blue under eye discoloration here and it's not totally gone. I'm gonna need a color corrector if I'm gonna expect to cancel that out just wearing this RMS concealer slash foundation combo. But still for as shiny as it started out during the day, I'm just so impressed with the way it held up. Like, look at my T-zone. I, I think the powder helps as well, which is why I don't, if you have combo, um, maybe even normal combo to oily skin, would absolutely recommend uh, either purchasing this setting powder or just using whatever pressed or loose setting powder you happen to have on hand that you like to wear with your concealers and foundations because otherwise I do think this might have been a little bit more of a hot mess. I do think it is a cool concept where you just take this small pot, this beauty oil that's an incredible multitasker because you can use it at night, you can use it, I mean, it's it's just a general skincare product, but then you use it to thin out your concealer product, so it really helps you get the extra mileage out of your beauty products. So I, I really like the idea of these two. But something it makes me wanna do is see if I can do it with any other products because again, kind of the, the theme with this whole story is how expensive these are. So I do wanna try a different sort of beauty oil and I do want to see if you, uh, granted, you do get a lot of product here. I mean, compared to, what did I compare it to before? The Cover Effects Custom Cover Drops, this is significantly more product in here. I think, anyway. Okay, don't quote me on that because I don't have Custom Cover Drops sitting right here, but I would venture to guess. Don't quote me on that. And then I would also want to see if I can mix this or any other beauty oil with a different sort of potted concealer or maybe even a stick concealer to achieve the same overall effect. Maybe not, maybe these were specifically formulated for this, so only these products will be able to do it, but you don't know until you try. So that is next, not next, but on my list of things to try. Then there's the powder, which I also really like. I love how finely milled it is. I think there are very few pigmented powders. Remember that one time at the beginning of the video where I was like, I don't even know why they have shades on here, because it's so 
not pigmented. Yes, it is. And I'm impressed at how finely milled it is for how pigmented it is. Uh, but I will say, I think I needed a lighter color. Even though it, it looks fine now, I do think I might have been able to achieve more of a brightening effect in my under eye area specifically if I had a shade lighter than this. But in terms of how it laid over that somewhat shiny, um, I mean, honestly, downright oily base, very impressed with how it sunk in and, and really like just merged with that product without becoming cakey or just becoming a texture mess on my skin. This is a really great compliment to that. So again, like I said, I would recommend having setting powder, but to that end, maybe one that's like the most finely milled in your collection just to make sure it plays nicely with that technique. Plus it does offer up a little bit of extra coverage because it has that pigmentation. So if you like the idea of this natural makeup look, but just want another option to make sure that coverage is slightly more buildable, this would be a good powder to do that with. And now let's talk about the Mix Master. As far as natural highlights go, this is fine. Obviously it didn't create any sort of out of control shine on the rest of my face. So even though it is a cream product and overall, I do want to revisit this because I, I know I mentioned it at my noon check-in. Um, my skin, you know, in parts of it, it never feels like it dries down. So I'm a little surprised the whole face held up as well as it did. But for being as sticky dewy might be a better word as dewy as the rest of my face including this highlighter remained it didn't get out of control on my face it still looks like a very healthy dewy sort of sheen everywhere so if that is more your speed if you are not a glow to the gods kind of highlight person you want something that is more like I just got done with a quick run and I had this natural flush and oh yes is that sweat no I'm just glistening from my soul that's what this will do for you and so not a bad look not a bad look and it lasts well throughout the day even on combo skin um let's see oh we also have the elf beauty shield primer i am all sorts of out of order today so i think i need to talk more about this in a separate video about this new skincare collection from elf because i want to compare it to the tinted moisturizer that comes in here overall I, because they're so similar like in terms of function and pigmentation i just want to compare those two because they are so similar but i will say after having tried this under a couple of different oh hey bud what's up after having tried this under a couple of different foundations including powder liquid and now this weird you know oil cream hybrid are you comfortable back there oh good after having tried it under multiple foundations I, I it doesn't really I don't find affect the lasting power of my foundation but stay tuned for more information in that later video and last I think the only other thing we have to cover here is the real techniques brushes which are nice I was impressed with how um, firm they were like they're firm enough to lay a good amount and build up a good amount of product in the areas you need them they all have those tapered tips which makes them good for getting into harder to reach places like your inner corner around your nose if you're talking about you know a small brush it's good to do more detail work around the eyes or precision lip application or even precise touch-ups around the face that is something that I think within the context of the real text techniques collection they were missing there was the um, oh in fact this brush that uh, I had previously and I think they had been using you know as your all-over shadow or your crease or your concealer it's just like a smaller buffing brush but this really breaks out the many functions of this and then expands it even more with those smaller little brushes to cover off and really make sure you can do all those things in the Real Techniques collection. The other thing I want to note about the hairs that I found different from a lot, if not all of the other brushes from the other um, collections that they have, is the softness and the texture of the bristles. In general, that's not to say that the Real Techniques bristles haven't always been very soft, really comfortable to use on the skin, but these just feel a little bit different and I'm not sure if it's the cut here on the end. This almost visually looks more tapered and I don't mean like the overall shape of the brush. I mean the actual bristles themselves themselves like feel or look um, tapered. There's just something about them. I may be totally off by that, but there's something about the how dense this is and how stiff this is for its density versus how dense this is. And, and it just gives you a little bit more flexibility here, which I find makes it a little bit more effective at helping build and yet really buff product in wherever you might need it. So overall, I really recommend them. If you find that among your brush collection, you're missing that sort of precision aspect and you like the idea of this tapered, um, you know, the tapered format with the bristle texture I was talking about, would recommend you checking these out because they look and feel very consistent with the rest of the Real Techniques quality, which, you know, I've had this guy now for how, probably almost since I started YouTube, since they launched their Real Techniques brush collection. And these feel no different. So if you're curious, I would go ahead and check them out. Whoa, as usual, guys, this has been 
a long, a long video, but hopefully a useful one. Again, I did this because a lot of you seem to like the one that I did before, so let me know if that remains the same. Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, let me know how you want to see it changed or just removed entirely. I personally enjoy them, but I'm always open to new ideas. So let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you plan on trying any of these products now after having seen them in kind of a full day's demo. Would love to hear what you think. Besides that, guys, thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.